Let's learn how to create a really cool dissolve effect in Unity. We're going to cover how to make the shader and how to apply it to a material and object in your game. First off, in order to do this, you're going to need to be using the universal render pipeline or the high definition render pipeline. If you don't know what that means, which one you're using or which one you should be using, check out this other video that I made where I explain it all and then come back to this one. Now, to make a dissolve shader, we have to attack two things. One, being the transparency of the object, and the other being the glowing edge to make it look like the material is disintegrating from the edges. So let's create a new shader. We're going to right click, go to new, shader graph, URP, because I'm using the universal render pipeline, and then we're going to select lit. Lit just means that we want our material to be affected by light. If we make this as an unlit shader, we actually won't be able to make that cool glowing effect on the edge because anything that glows by definition is emitting and using light. First, let's tackle the transparency aspect. So we don't want the object to just disappear to go from here to not here. That wouldn't really be a dissolve effect. So we know that there has to be some sort of transition happening between the object being completely opaque and completely transparent. There has to be an in between. So if you're wanting to change the transparency of an object, you're going to be manipulating the alpha channel. But you might notice there is no option currently for alpha. So we have to go into our graph settings and make sure that alpha clipping is on. And you'll see now that two nodes have been added, alpha and alpha clipping. All alpha means is level of transparency, and it's on a scale of zero to one. Zero being completely transparent and one being completely opaque. So if you'll notice, if I bring the alpha value below the default alpha clipping value, the object completely disappears, which this is not what we want. To control the transparency, we need to plug something in to the alpha channel. To explain how this really works, I'm going to plug in an image texture that I have. I have this black and white picture of a rose that will showcase how this works. So if I plug this into the alpha channel, Unity looks at all of the values of this and converts it into transparent and non-transparent values, depending on how light or dark the colors are. So as soon as I start to drag the clipping value up from zero, all of the darkest parts of the image are the first to go transparent. And as I drag closer to one, the grays and the whites start to go as well until I'm taking in all of the values of the photo. However, this is a dissolve effect. So we want something that looks pretty organic. That's why you see a lot of game developers using the noise node for this. Think of this as a mathematically generated image, because as we just saw, you could plug in your own image if you wanted to. But the nice thing about noise is that there's a wide variety of color variations. There's a lot of that in between gray going on here. So as we affect the clipping threshold, the transition between opaque and transparent is super smooth. And controlling this clipping value is what's going to give us this effect. So we're going to want to be able to control this in code. So we're going to want to bring this value into a node. And since we're working on a scale from zero to one here, this has to be a float value or a floating decimal number. Now let's move on to the glowing edge. First things first, if we want something to glow on our shader, we're ultimately going to be plugging something in to the emission node. However, it has to be smart. We need to find a way to know exactly where the edge of the transparency stops. If we add a color straight into the emission node, it affects the whole shader and overrides the base color that we set up, and we only want to know where the edge is. So what we do is take our noise node and run it through a step node. I'm not sure why this is called a step node versus a threshold node, which is just a little more common in the design space but that's what it is. And it's doing something very similar to the alpha clip node over here. It's converting the values of the noise into on or off values or transparent versus non-transparent, depending on how dark the color is. Only problem here is that as I adjust the alpha clip value, the step value isn't adjusting with it. And the step value needs to know exactly where the alpha clip value is in order for this to actually look like an edge. 
the step value needs to be aware of what the alpha clip value is at all times. So we're going to connect the two values. Instead of these values being independent, I'll be able to control both values at once so that the edge value is constantly following the transparency value. Now, once I do this, you might notice it looks like nothing has changed. And that's because, well, the alpha clip value and the edge value are exactly the same. So both of these are running at the exact same time in the same place. So we actually can't see the emission value for the edge because the transparency effect is clipping it off. So we need to add a teeny tiny value to our float before we plug it in to the step node. So instead of these values being exactly the same, the edge value will always be ever so slightly larger than the alpha clip value revealing our glowing edge. And when I say teeny tiny, I mean teeny tiny. We're talking 0 0.01, 0 0.02 value here. And now we can see that our shader effect is working beautifully and we can actually apply this to a material and see how it shapes up. But before we do that, I wanna update my colors. I messed around a little bit, but I eventually liked the idea of having something fiery. So I want a glowing orange edge, but currently the edge color is just the default white. So what I need to do is multiply my step node by a color node. So I'm going to plug in the out value into my multiply node and then I'm going to create a new basic color node and plug that into the in. And when I do that, you can see that all of the white parts of my step node are now taking on the color that I've chosen. Now I can just plug the multiply node into the emission slot and we're good to go. I messed around with the color a little bit more and now that I'm mostly happy, let's make sure to click that save asset button at the top and head back on over to our scene view. Now let's create a new object and a new material. On that material, I'm going to change the shader to the one that I just created and then drop it onto the object. Now that you've saved your asset, you should be able to find it by name under the shader graph section here. I've named mine dissolve and there it is. Now let's just drag and drop that onto our new object. And while this is looking pretty cool, I still have the question, how do I control the level of dissolve? So if I look at my dissolve material here and look at it in the inspector, it's not giving me a whole lot of information. So to control this value, this is actually our main float value back in our shader graph. So I'm going to head back to shader graph and turn this float value into a property and name it dissolve strength. Now, if I save that and go back, if I click on my shader now, I can see that that value is in the inspector where I can control it from the editor. Pretty cool, right? And while that is how to make a dissolve shader, if you want to learn how to control this through code, follow me along to the next video.